Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Governor and um, other colleagues, Deputy Minister, um, thank you. And um, all of the regulators, we have SEC, um, Reverend Daniel Obami Tete, MPRA, Tatagraphy, and um, I think NIC, um, Justice Ofori is here. Um, because, so this has been a real um, team effort um, to get us to where we are this morning. Um, so good morning to you all. Um, as I announced um, in the evening of yesterday, Sunday, uh, 4 December 2022, uh, we are gathered here today to invite holders of domestic debt to voluntarily exchange approximately 137 billion Ghana CDs of the domestic notes and bonds of the Republic, including Estla and Dace bonds, for a package of new bonds to be issued by the Republic. The debt sustainability analysis demonstrated unequivocally that Ghana's public debt is unsustainable and that the government may not be able to fully service it down the road if no action is taken now. Indeed, debt servicing is now absorbing more than half of total government revenues and almost 70% of tax revenues. While our total public debt stock, including that of state-owned enterprises and all, exceeds 100% of our GDP. This is why we are today announcing the debt exchange which will help in restoring our capacity to service debt. This is the path towards resetting the economy to a more stable one capable of addressing the development challenges of the country. The reasons are quite clear. COVID-19 pandemic, rising global food prices, rising crude oil and energy prices, and the Russia-Ukraine war adversely affected Ghana's macroeconomy with spillovers to the financial sector. The combination of adverse external shocks have exposed Ghana to a surge in inflation, a large exchange rate depreciation, and stress on the financing of the budget, which taken together have put our public debt on an unsustainable path. To address the ongoing economic crisis, the government has requested financial support from the International Monetary Fund. We expect to reach a staff level agreement soon on an IMF program aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and protecting the most vulnerable. To this end, as a government, we are determined to implement wide-ranging structural and fiscal reforms to restore fiscal and debt sustainability and support growth. Consistent of all the above, I announced during the budget statement presented to Parliament on November 24th that government will undertake a debt operation program. We presented to you the contours of the domestic debt exchange program yesterday. As you are aware, we established a consultative committee to work with the financial sector and incorporated their advice in our decisions. Today, we are here to officially launch Ghana's domestic debt exchange program. The objective of this program is to alleviate the debt burden in a most transparent, efficient, and expedited manner in this context by means of an exchange offer. The government of Ghana has been working hard to minimize the impact of the domestic debt exchange on investors holding government bonds. In particular, it does not embed any principal haircut on eligible bonds as we promised. Let me repeat this fact as plainly as I can. In this debt exchange, individuals holding domestic bonds will not lose, are not affected um, by the value of the investment will be retained. So let us remove any doubt and discard any speculation that the government is about to cut your retirement savings or the notional value 
of your investment. This is not the case. As already announced, treasury bills are completely exempted and all holders will be paid the full value of the investment on maturity. There will be no haircut on the principal of bonds. Individuals who hold bonds would also not be affected at all. Our domestic debt operation involves an exchange for new Ghana bonds with a coupon that steps up to 10% as soon as 2025, with zero interest in 2023, and a first interest payment in 2024, and longer average maturity for the bonds. Existing domestic bonds as of 1st December 2022 will be exchanged for a set of four new bonds maturing in 2027, 2029, 2032, and 2037. Predetermined allocation ratios are as follows, 17% for the short bonds, 17% for the intermediate bonds, 25% for the medium term bonds, and 41% for the long term bonds. The annual coupon on all these new bonds will be set as I mentioned, at 0% in 2023, 5% in 2024, and 10% from 2025 until maturity. Coupon payments will be semi-annual. For emphasis, this domestic debt exchange program will not affect individual bondholders. This domestic debt exchange is part of a more comprehensive agenda to restore debt and financial sustainability. We are also working towards a restructuring of our external indebtedness, which we will announce in due course. This is a key requirement to allow Ghana's economy to recover as fast as possible from this crisis. This is also a key requirement to secure an IMF support. We are confident that of the measures we are putting in place including those outlined in the 2023 budget statement and underpinned by a successful IMF program, Ghana will witness a stable and thriving economy from 2023. We accordingly anticipate that inflation will be returned to single digits, ensuring that real return on these new bonds will be protected. As His Excellency the President declared in his address to the nation on 30th August, 30th October 2020, and I quote, to restore and sustain debt sustainability, we plan to reduce our total public debt to GDP ratio to some 55% in present value terms by 2028. This can only be achieved through the active participation of all key economic actors. In that perspective, we call upon all domestic debt holders to take their share in ensuring that public debt sustainability is quickly restored by participating in this exchange program. Our pledge to you all is that government will take all appropriate measures to safeguard the solvency of the financial institutions involved in the exchange. Thanks to well-targeted regulatory measures and the creation of a financial stability fund, banks, pension funds, insurance companies, fund managers, and collective investment schemes will be supported to ensure that they are able to meet the obligations to their clients as they fall due. For this reason, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana will follow suit with details of the necessary assistance in due course. We have also dialogued extensively with regulators across the financial sector, including the Security and Exchange Commission, National Insurance Commission, and the National Pensions Regulatory Authority to agree that regulatory forbearance will be provided to all entities whose financial position is adversely affected by virtue of participating in this exchange. This debt exchange provides an orderly way to put our economy back on track. These efforts will be complemented by fiscal measures to protect the neediest and most vulnerable in society. The government expects overwhelming support to this exchange, and in truth, the success of this necessary endeavor depends, of course, upon the public's cooperation. That would also mean the media being helpful in disseminating the right information to economic actors. We are all in this together, 
and we intend to get out of this together. The alternative will be a far worse economic crisis with protracted closure from international markets, including imported goods and services, and further domestic e economic instability, both for the real economy and the financial sector. It would also mean depleted fiscal resources to support the neediest. Ghana is not the first nation to undertake such domestic debt operation. To illustrate the point, let me cite examples of just two countries, among many others in the last decade. Jamaica resorted to such operations in the past, notably in 2010 and 2013. In both cases, it shows the sense of responsibility of the American people and proceeded through a voluntary approach. The approach was highly successful, as more than 99% of holders of domestic bonds participated in the exchange. On the contrary, in the case of Greece, the authorities chose to undertake a coercive approach whereby a law was passed to force people into participating. We intend to avoid as much as possible the Greek approach as we strive to reach a consensual solution with our bondholders, which really is the Ghanaian way. In any case, the good news is that the domestic debt exchange has yielded positive results both in Greece and Jamaica and many others, and will certainly put our economy on a much stronger footing. Greece, as you know, has now recovered full market assets. We certainly anticipate a similar success story in Ghana. I want to assure you about the government's commitment to do what is necessary to ensure that we succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, today's announcement is a major policy step that the government is taking over the short period to restore macroeconomic stability, achieve debt sustainability, and get the economy fully back on track in order to create and protect jobs, provide and enhance incomes, foster strong and inclusive growth led by exports, and restore hope to the Ghanaian people. In all humility, I wish to remind each and every one of us that Ghana is the only home we have. Its progress and prosperity are our collective duty. We have overcome many challenges and risen to the occasion many times before. We are a resilient society. Thankfully, today our development is in a far more advanced stage than before when other challenges confronted us. We have made big progress over the years and the progress before us is even greater. This is another challenge which we must surely overcome. And overcome we must for our sake and for the sake of our children. Together we can beat this. Our ultimate goal when all is done is to put one of fiscal responsibility and rectitude, economic stability and growth that will truly translate into improving the lives of the people and all of the nation's economic actors, including investors. Your support, fellow Ghanaians, can help us realize this ambition. I say this because I know that together we shall triumph. And as in the days of Nehemiah, let us all rise up, family by family, and rebuild together. Let us make our Nkabom budget a reality Thank you, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you. Thank you so much for the insightful remarks, Honorable Minister. Uh, if I didn't take anything with me at all, I noted that no haircut on principal of bonds that that was so refreshing to hear and also noted that individuals who hold these bonds are fully exempt from this debt exchange program we have a number of media houses that are covering us across the country and i'll use this opportunity to acknowledge some of them and as and when we get more names we will add to the list we are live on gtv city tv metro tv tv3 and joy news on Facebook, we are streaming at Ministry of Information. Kindly join us. I must acknowledge some dignitaries who have been with us that I skipped earlier. We have the Director General 
of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Reverend Daniel Obama Tete with us. We also have the first Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari with us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for questions. If you have any question, this is the best time to ask. If you show by hand, Ruth will bring the microphone to you. You mention your name, media house, and then proceed to ask your question. Okay. Kindly keep the questions brief so that we can take more questions. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Stella G. Jom Sugli. I work with Ghana Web. So um, I heard the Honorable Minister say that individual bondholders will not be affected. So can you give us um, a vivid breakdown of the particular people whose debt instruments will be affected? Because there's been reports in the media that some Echo Bank, Data Bank, and other people are losing part of their investment. So we would like to kindly know which people are going to be affected. Thank you for the question, please. Hi there, my name is Cooper Inveen from Reuters. I kind of want to elaborate on that question a little bit more. Um, we talk about individual bondholders not being uh, affected, but a lot of retail investors in bonds actually hold their bonds through pension and mutual funds, which I presume would be classified as institutions. So how would individuals who hold their bonds through pension and mutual funds uh, be protected? Thanks. Thank you for the question. My name is Esther Edu from GTV, and I would like to know if the extension in the maturity dates of the bonds will not have a devaluation effect on their investment, talking about the time value of money for the bondholders. Thank you for the question, Minister. We can take two more before we invite the Minister for his responses. Um, I had, okay. My name is Winston with Metro TV. I heard the finance minister say um, he intends to bring, oh. a, intends to bring a, dig, a single digit inflation come soon. Already we are hovering around 44.4%. We have not yet seen any clear path policy-wise in how we intend to bring inflation downwards. Also, I'd like to inquire of, uh, from the finance minister concerning um, the, is yesterday's statement that the finance minister said the treasury bills are protected as there's full redemption for the uh, domestic debt, but the other local debt instruments, such debt. as bank debt holdings, are to be exchanged for four instruments with different maturity dates. So, implicitly, there's going to be haircut compared to what he said, there will not be haircut going forward. Thank you for the question. We can take one more, then we'll go to the minister for his responses. All right. My name is Ebenezer Sakuti from JFM. My name is Ebenezer Sabute from JFM. My, okay, my name is Ebenezer Sabute from JFM. My first question has to do with market confidence. I want to know the plan government is trying to do to ensure that this doesn't affect market confidence. And then secondly, uh, it's like everyone is taking a hit from this crisis. What hit is government taking uh, to ensure that we all, I mean, share the, the, we all contribute to getting this uh, economy back on track? Thank you. Okay, so I'll invite Mr. Akes for some of the responses that are related to debt. And if the minister wishes to respond to some other questions on policy, then he will take them. Okay. Oh, yes, please. Um, uh, Mr. Arkes is the director of debt, and he will be answering most of the questions. But you know, the, the last question was interesting for me, the issue of uh, market confidence. 
And the challenge really for us as a nation is that we are where we are. The question really is what direction do we take? Do we take an orderly approach to it with cynicism or a disorderly approach to allow things to just go? And I think that's deeply the question that we should ask ourselves. Where do we want our nation to go where we are at this present time? And therefore, how are we going to evangelize this message in a way that says that this is the orderly approach? You know, we did assume an IMF program, which we successfully went through. So we should be hopeful that when we commit to this program, we also are going to successfully go through. And I think that has to be sort of the overriding um, sense of um, determination to get through this. If not, then we can't, as a people, walk through this. So it's important that we all take our personal responsibilities towards rebuilding this broken wall. Then you talked about um, the issue of what is government doing. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting question because if you look at the budget, you know, we agreed to a 3.7% um, adjustment of which we front loaded 2% into the first year. Now that is huge adjustment to be able to go through that. Of course, there are the issues of, well, what do you do with government expenditure, etc. And the administrative measures that we took are not insignificant, you know, and, and, and those should be appreciated. Uh, World Bank is also helping us to look individually at all of these flagship programs, etc., um, so that, you know, we'll be able to make them more efficient. Uh, but truly, this is a junction um, that we have to make a decision as a nation to go forward, think through the orderliness of it going forward, and know that whether it's Greece or Jamaica or Ghana, that we shall succeed and triumph in that. And I think we really need to get into a very positive mindset, you know, um, hold us accountable, um, but all of us, family by family, participate in what is ahead of us. So I'll have Mr. Arkes, who is a technical uh, person, director at the ministry, you know, go through maybe um, a few presentations on some technical issues, and through that also respond to the various questions um, that you have put before us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And um, I would spend some bit of time to explain some of the um, issues that have been put on the table. And um, I think the, the, I will add on to the Honorable Minister, so I'll follow from the, the, the side that a lot of that the market confidence can be measured scientifically. Um, as you can see, on 29th of November 2022, Moody's downgraded Ghana again. This year, we've had all the three major sovereign credit rating agencies downgraded in Ghana. These three command more than 98% of the world's global ratings. And since 2003, this is the lowest level we've ever been. And that is a sign of the confidence of the market. Again, you can also look at the second indicator, um, something that the finance people call the spread. So the spread is just measuring all the available instruments for um, investors to, to fund, and then picking the most safe of all of it, and then measure all the others to that. Now, when you cross a 1,000 basis points, then it's a sign of how the market see you as a risk. And at that point, we had reached almost about 3,000. Now, if that reaches three months, it's temporal. If it's six months, it's temporal. When it gets to one year, then it is becoming permanent. And that means we must do something about it to restore the confidence. So the question you asked can be explained from this nomenclature. And when you read the fine lines of their report, you will see that they mention in very subtle sense that if we turn the economic crisis out positively, you will see that upgrades would go up and that will show confidence 
moving up. So that would be a good measure for, for, for us all to have a look at. There was another question about the individual. The individual in this case is a natural person. All of us sitting here are individuals, so we are natural. I can see you, you can see me, you can talk, we can talk. So you're natural. And if you're registered in the CSD, so in the list that you have, the CSD has registry of everybody who has invested in government instruments. So if it's an individual, it is tagged as such. So it's easy to identify who an individual is. But I think our colleague raised a concern as to what happens to a mutual fund. Meaning if all of us here put our funds together into a pot and then we express Madame to manage it for us into government instruments, some private instruments, real estate or any other asset class, what happens to you, the individual, in that pot? In that case, you are talking about a collective scheme. You are talking about all of us together. But if all of us are together, there may be a reason why you may want to go out as an individual. But in that case, the registry is for all of us as a collective sense. The decision individual will take usually must be seen within the bigger contest of why you are an investor and then what you want to do going forward. The details, as Honorable Minister mentioned, of classes of assets like that will be dealt with when the regulators come and have discussions with you. Um, so I think that answers the position of the, um, of the, of the individual. Now, I think I heard a question on a haircut. Um, haircuts can come in three forms. Or it, it, it's in quotes, haircut. It's, 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 it's a simple name for restructuring or something like that, if you want to put it that way. But the first one would be assuming you are holding a three-year bond. And for whatever reason, I wouldn't be able to pay you back. And I extend the time from three years to five years. It gives me time on maturity so that I can pay at a later date. That is one form. Another form could be that um, I am going to take your principal, if you brought in a thousand Ghana cities, and I'm going to reduce that in a sense, right? So that can be, in quotes, a haircut. But in this case of the debt exchange, the amount of money has not been extended or reduced. And then in our portfolio, we have maturing bonds that go up to almost about 20 years or 18 years. But if you look carefully in the bonds that the Honorable Minister mentioned, um, it started 2027 to 2037. So between about five years to 15 years. And the mix will go for everybody. So a weighted average may be around 10%. So lower a bit than the uh, maturity that we do have here. Now, Somebody will ask, inflation now is at 40%. So real costs of funding should be about 40%. But at 40%, how many emerging market cost of funding? What business can you do to have this very sticky, high and expensive cost of borrowing? If I'm doing a business, then it means I have to apply 40% on, on top of that. Would the sovereign be able to honor that if I give you a 10-year bond and it's at 40 fixed income, 40% every two years, almost the principal is paid out as interest cost. Within the life cycle of 10 years, the principal will have paid about four times, not the principal. All of us sitting here, if you were owning our companies with that kind of cost structure, how would you fare? So on one side, you are benefiting from the interest but it's also a cost for us. When you look at the economy together, all of these market players, both the borrower and the lender, are all operating. So the question is, are we happy as a people with that high cost regime? I think looking at your faces, the answer is no. So we may have to do something about it, and that's why the macro setup is key, and I think the budget in various paragraphs highlighted it. So the question here is, your, the principal is guaranteed. The ability to pay is also measured against the stress test that has been done on the financial institutions. Don't forget our money is on the financial institutions. These are heavy directions of things. And as Robert Minister mentioned, in Jamaica, in Greece, Argentina, in other countries, it is not an easy decision to make. 
It has far-reaching consequences. But you will consider the decision on the interest cost against the stress it can put on the entire financial sector and have a balancing act that satisfies an optimal choice across everyone. So the choice of the step up in the interest rates is trying to address exactly the capability and ability of the sovereign to be raising the funding to pay for that. But the question is not only on the interest. Look into the budget statement carefully. When you go into the fiscal, you go into the overall balance, you see three items there, one called net domestic financing, you see net foreign financing, and then you will see an item called exceptional financing. In the foreign financing, you see amortization of loans, meaning we pay back. You see amortization when maturities occur. But in the net domestic financing, where all these bonds are, there's no amortization. What does that mean? It means we are rolling over all the time. But in this case, these bonds are going to be what we call exit bonds. So in the first instance, where the Honorable Minister mentioned 2027 maturity, in actual fact, in half of the instruments that will be in will be paid back. And the last of that in 2027 will be paid back. In 2029, a similar thing will happen. Half will be paid back in 2028, and half will be paid back in 2029. Similar to 2032, that will be paid in three equal installments, because the Honorable Minister mentioned 25% of the allocation will be there. So that's larger than the 17. So it will be divided into three. So three years prior, all that stock will be paid. Then the last one, which is 2037, is large, but it will start amortizing five years before 2037. The idea is to provide liquidity. The idea is to ensure a balance of the coupon payment and ability to pay the stock off Otherwise, the way we we're going, it would have been difficult to manage that. So that is a plus. When you do a net present value term, that adds and reduces the risk involved in. So I think, Honorable Minister, I believe the, um, I've taken a bit of time to explain. It's a bit technical, but I think I've tried to, to give the, um, um, in simple terms, the answers to that. Thank you very much. So we'll take the last set of questions. So if you have any question, show by hand, they'll bring the microphone to you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Joshua from the Business and Financial Times. Um, given that 2023, we look, um, the government is looking at saving about 31 billion um, CDs in net, uh, that's interest cost. How much are we looking at saving um, given that this debt exchange program is coming on from next year. How much program are we looking at saving on in terms next of, year? How much are we looking at saving in terms of interest cost um, next year? And also, um, yesterday the minister also mentioned that the the fund of which is being set up will be um, government led. But um, I'm, I just want to find out also that would would it be to just for clarity would it be an IMF led sort of um, fund whereby it will give some sort of confidence to um, any bilateral or multilateral partners that will come in. All right, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Sani Abdrahman. I work with the Media General, Ghana. Uh, first of all, I want to know, the conversation has largely centered on the domestic. Of course, we are here to launch that program. The international community, the international lenders, the external lenders are also anxious, wanting to know what the engagement would be like in terms of the bonds they are holding. So if, if one of the ministers can share some details on that. Also, in the 2023 budget, we've seen that the deficit or the shortfall is around 61 billion Ghana cities. If you do simple mathematics, even 15 CD to a dollar, that is like $4 billion. A lot of people are worried that that's not uh, an indication that the government is committed to some sort of fiscal discipline, because in difficult time like this, we expect the government to slow down on expenditure, to signal the international community that there is commitment to uh, fiscal consolidation. We haven't seen that. If there is any explanation 
that steak and offer i'll be glad and uh, please very you've asked two questions let's leave it at that so that your colleagues will also get the opportunity to ask their questions okay i'm natalie Netty from city tv i would like to know can the individual bondholders sell their bonds to banks after the exercise and if so will government pay the banks the original coupon My name is Nano Yankra from Asasi Radio. Um, I want to know where you are drawing the money into the uh, Financial Stability Fund. Also, what is the communication plan to um, get the people, ordinary Ghanaians, like people in the market, to understand this? Because um, this morning I got some indication that people were rushing to some savings and loans to take their money. So I'd like to know what the plan for communication is. Thank you for the question. Okay, we can take two more. Okay. My name is Winston of Metro TV. Uh, my question is, the finance minister said that this bond action program is a pre-requirement to secure IMF support. What other requirements are we not aware of? Can he give us more insight? Also, uh, he said that the uh, community collaboration with the Security and Action Commission, initially uh, the Security and Action Commission gave support in the initial financial sector cleanup. Are we to anticipate more economic challenges? Because in the report released yesterday, he said that they are to use every appropriate approach or measures to ensure the impact does not affect individual bondholders. So are they open to use any economic or financial method to their advantage without any control from the finance ministry? Thank you. Okay. Last, the final question. Okay. We'll take only one. That, that should be the last. My name is Morris. I work with um, Ghana Television. I want to understand, um, at the finance ministry, was there any point where um, the team realized that our debt was entering into unsustainability realms and what was done about it? Was this whole challenge a surprise um, on government or the finance ministry? I ask this question so that we do not come back you know, some few years later and talk about debt restructuring. And also with the media, I want to understand how do we communicate this whole thing to assist government to boost the confidence uh, because it is what it is. Okay, thank you. I take that to be the last question. Unfortunately, we cannot take everybody's question, so please. <laughs> okay, so I'll invite Mr. Akes for some responses. Thank you very much. Um, quite a large number, so you have to help me a little bit to remember all of them. But I will start off from the point of the, um, but there were two related questions. One of them was the budget deficit, um, and then also the savings that could come on. So it's, um, the Honorable Minister for Finance presented a budget statement on 24 November. That budget is a pre-debt exchange budget. So we'll call it like no policy change budget. So what you see there as a deficit, if we complete the implementation of this, then that budget will have some revisions. So most definitely that deficit you see there will decline. Again, when you look into that budget, you would have seen a domestic debt service amount, and I'm sure that's what our colleague was asking. Now that will be if we do nothing then that is the amount we need to pay via coupon pay, I mean, um, transactions, and not on the stock that we are holding. So that also will be flexed down. But let's not forget that it's not total. The idea is there will be exceptions, like the individuals are out, 
That also has treasury bills coupon payments, so the treasury bills component will also be out. Will be in the existing instruments as they are. Then the new one would kick in with the terms for 2023, as the Honourable Minister has mentioned. So one of the key outcomes from this is that those numbers you are seeing would have to have a natural flex. So that I think provides clarity on those two sides. Then, right. Yeah, you are taking me, you said you put the right information out, but you are taking me into the realm of guesstimate because the issue the Honorable Minister mentioned is that it's a voluntary exchange. So there is not a clear element because we are going to deal with you. It's not a by force. If it's by force, I can tell you with certainty. I can tell you 32 is off. I can tell you that the holders from individuals about 8 billion. I can give you all of that with certainty. But once it has an element of voluntary, let's be careful the right information has to be done rightly. So I'll beg you to just um, hang on to that. And not that we are not able to, we can guess what range it is, but we'll give you the right information as the time goes on. Then with the, there was a question um, about the IMF and then the multilaterals. Yes, the IMF program that we are envisaging to reach a service level agreement um, as early as practical in the next few weeks with your support, but also the IMF serves as a very good catalytic institution to kick in a lot of uh, multilateral or bilateral supports. So you're right, we can get a number of support mechanisms that will come in to ensure that the financing of the budget is complemented by those resources. Then you made a reference also to the element of fiscal discipline. I think we all cannot agree with you more. The fiscal discipline is going to be extremely key. Going forward with an IMF program, with our own laws and structural reforms, where most of them have been highlighted in the budget statement, and I would go that you take a look at that, will be extremely, extremely key going forward in terms of fiscal discipline. And I believe that one of the major things, I think somebody asked, how are we going to communicate? Under a debt treatment of this nature, communication will be extremely important. So you will notice that we would have regular communication with you. There will be regular flyers. There will be regular reportage. There will be regular engagement. The issues are technical. The issues can be difficult. And the issues may be unprecedented. So it is important that we inform you, we be with you as we go through the journey. So please rest assured that for most of you in the communication um, elements, there will be um, a lot of discussions with key actors who are here from the government side to ensure that it's done. Um, the other question that I saw was the sources of funding for the um, Financial Stability Fund. Um, here, it's a combination of sources, both multilateral and then from ourselves. Um, a lot of discussions, um, I think the details in there will be rolled out um, later on by the regulator and the central bank, but then most of the sources will be from domestic itself and external. And that is a very important um, intervention to ensure that there's a backstop that would provide liquidity for institutions to meet any demands that you would have. I think I overheard uh, people, I think reportage that people are going to savings and loans to pick. I think in banking, when we have a run, we can run into a deeper crisis. I will call that these measures are to provide comfort for us. So let us exercise restraint and let us not cause unintended effects by this very, very important um, message that we have today. Now, on the element of, um, um, I think, I, Madam, I believe I've finished every question, or is there any outstanding? Right. Sure.
create some local dollar bonds. How will it be treated? Come from the domestic program or treated as a service? Very good point. This is where the Honorable Minister will come in. <laughs> I'll still take my leave and then the Honorable Minister will be around. I will now invite the Honorable Minister for his concluding remarks, but kindly note that there will be further technical engagement with the media beyond the, this live stream so that we get to, you know, explain further some of the issues that you may not understand. Thank you very much indeed. And um, um, I think you will be interacting with um, Miss um, Ruth Botio, could you get up so that um, they see you? And she would be the nexus for your discussions. But as you can see, um, some archers and a number of our ministry directors, um, Agliko and Co, will be available for consistent interaction on the technical aspect of it. But I think the key thing really, uh, when it's all said and done, is our own mindset as to where we are going and what type of trust and what type of accountability that government would also bring to bear. Um, but we cannot afford a disorderly approach to this uh, because we know the crisis is upon us. I think the question was therefore, um, I guess implicit in the question was did we know that this was coming and we did not do anything about it. Um, it just strikes me as odd for us to have this uh, sort of two apocalyptic events in world history and for somehow all of us who have been able to see it um, when you look at trillions of dollars that those who reserve currencies have been able to put into their system. So it's not an issue of a smirk or whatever. And if you look at the way in which uh, we, we really invested uh, in our people over this period. You expect a certain return over a certain period. If that is you know, cut short uh, by events that you cannot expect, the returns to you do not come as they should. Um, so yes, certain efficiencies could have been done, uh, but let's be very clear um, that these years, um, six years, have been ones of unprecedented um, social interventions uh, which really is about building our human capital and turning the way forward. Um, so we are here, and how best do we use um, these moments um, to build a stronger economy? Um, that's what. So we really are looking um, for, for the media to truly participate with us, you know, and rally um, people, because the extent um, to which um, our interest charges consume some 70% and sometimes 100% of our uh, revenues um, is something that is not sustainable. And it's really a recalibration, therefore, um, of the whole interest rate regime um, so that we move into a sustainable orbit um, that we'll tend to continue with. Um, but yes, um, let me truly thank you for your presence. We will engage. I think our deputy ministers have been on radio and TV um, this morning. That will continue. Uh, Roof will set up a system um, that ensures uh, that there is enough information out there for everyone. Um, and the truth of the matter is that this may be one of the most effective collaboration of the regulators, the issue of liquidity, so there is no need to rush for your money uh, because certain forbearances will also be given to these institutions to help. Um, so in a sense, you know, this is an opportunity to have a pretty orderly um, exit through this and use that period to also build up on the issue of an export-driven economy, get our macro um, statistics uh, in order, um, put our nose to the grinder, and uh, make sure that we come out of this a much, much stronger economy than we have. Um, so we ask for your support uh, in this, and we as government also committed um, to fiscal rectitude uh, and ensuring um, that next year, even though it's going to be difficult, is a year in which we'll cross a Rubicon. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Minister, for this opportunity, and thanks 
and for coming.